We're following some breaking news right now. Homeland Security raiding the homes of Sean Diddy Combs. This is his home in Star Island. Live pictures where Homeland Security investigations uh, investigators are right now on the scene. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes ago. Don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2020. It appears that Cat Williams was correct when he said that music executive Sean Diddy's time as a free man is running out earlier this year in an interview with Shannon Sharp. For the Club Shay Shay podcast, the comic made these assertions. All of these uh, big deviants is all catching hell in 2020. Diddy's time appears to have officially run out, as federal authorities raided his three houses earlier today as part of Homeland Security investigations. With support from HSI Los Angeles HSI Miami and our local law enforcement partners, HSI New York carry out law enforcement activities as part of an ongoing investigation. We will offer more information as it becomes available a spokesman from Homeland Security Investigations declared as much in a statement to the public on Monday afternoon. According to TMZ, federal police showed up at the rapper's low residence on Monday afternoon, using helicopters to fly over the property. The site claims that the case is related to charges of human tea. Fox 11 footage revealed Diddy's sons Justin and Christian King Combs handcuffed outside their Beverly Hills residence. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. In any case, a lot of people are saying that the officers searched Diddy's house to find any evidence that might connect him to the numerous accusations that he is currently dealing with. We will always assist law enforcement in its efforts to prosecute those who break the law. And hopefully, this is the start of a process that will hold Mr. Com accountable for his reprehensible behavior. In November 2023, the singer Cassie Real Nam Ventura filed an explosive federal lawsuit against her former partner Sean Diddy, claiming he had been physically intimate with her throughout their relationship. The complaint alleged that Khan's AB ranged from beating Ventura and forcing her to be intimate with other men to assang her at her home in 2018. The rapper settled the lawsuit within a day. But since then, three more women and one man have sued Khan's, accusing him of a wide range of abusive behavior, including harassment of non-consensual pay and staff. Vicky, the music magnate, has refuted every accusation, saying that his opponents are trying to destroy his legacy and kill his character. Cassie claims she had experienced abuse, assault, and stalking on a regular basis. Ventura filed a lawsuit under the New York Adult Survivors Act, which allowed victims to pursue legal action against their alleged abusers and institutions for a single, one-year period, even after the statute of limitations had passed. In the lawsuit, Ventura claims that she first met Combs in 2005, when she was 19 years old and he was 37. She asserts that Combs controlled almost every aspect of her life, including her career and her access to personal medical records. She also claims that Combs frequently physically abused her multiple times a year and that he frequently provided her with large amounts of substances. The complaint further alleges that Combs made Ventura participate in interactions with male employees in several locales which he allegedly observed and filmed. The singer claims that she never went to the police because she was worried that doing so would only give Mr. Combs an additional justification to harm her. She also claimed that after a meal in 2018, Combs forced his way into her apartment and attempted to push her away while she kept saying no. Ventura claims that she permanently ended the relationship after that. In her lawsuit, she named a number of witnesses to the abuse, including her friend Tiffany Redd, a singer-songwriter who detailed an incident at Ventura's 29th birthday party in an open letter to Combs. Red and Ventura said that evening that Combs and his security detail made Ventura depart because he wanted her to have sexual relations with other guys. Red claimed that at the time, Ventura had told her that Combs was physically aggressive. I am compelled to appear on behalf of Cassie and myself and attest that all she wrote in her complaint about what transpired that night is consistent with what I experienced. Kunz attorney, Benjamin Brothman, stated that Kunz refuted the accusations and that the lawsuit was full of ludicrous and baseless falsehoods intended to damage Kunz's reputation and obtain a payday loan. Calm and Ventura reached a settlement one day after the lawsuit was filed. The specifics are still under wraps. Ventura said in a statement, I want to thank my family fans and lawyers for their unwavering support. Meanwhile, Calm said we had decided to resolve this matter amicably.
I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Brom said that the settlement is, in no way, an admission of wrongdoing. After the settlement, four additional people have come forward with claims against Diddy. Lizza Gardner filed the lawsuit on November 23, just before the Adult Survivors Act expired. She claims that in 1990 or 1991, she and a friend went to an MCA Records event where they met singer-songwriter Aaron Hall. Later, they went back to Hall's apartment for an after-party where Gardner claims she was offered more drinks and coerced into having an intimate relationship with Combs. She also claims that Combs wrote a note to her friend. The lawsuit claims that Gardner was left shocked and traumatized by the encounter, and that as she was getting dressed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to have a sexual relationship with him. Gardner alleges in another complaint, filed the same day that Combs came looking for her friend because he was afraid she would tell the girl he was seeing at the time. Gardner further claims that Combs attacked her again when he returned to the house she shared with her friend a few days later. Dickerson, Joey while Dickerson Neal did not report the alleged assault to the police right away. She eventually filed a police report with unidentified agencies in New York and New Jersey. The complaint claims that prosecutors told her they would need to corroborate her allegations, but she believes it is possible. Neal claims that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who purposefully drugged and Esther after their date. Witnesses feared that Combs would retaliate against them and that they would lose opportunities for future business and music if they made a statement supporting her account. A representative for Diddy claimed that the two women's claims were made up and accused them of taking advantage of the Adult Survivors Act. Another woman, identified in the complaint as Jane Doe, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6, claiming that Combs, his longtime lieutenant Harv Pierre, and a third person who was unseen as salient joined forces against her at Combs Manhattan Recording Studio in 2003 when she was 17. Pierre, who previously served as president of Bad Boy Entertainment, has also been sued by a former assistant who alleges he used his position of authority as plaintiff's boss to exploit and essay her several times between 2016 and 2017. The lawsuit claims that the men do across state lines from Detroit to New York City on a private jet and plied the young person with substances and alcohol until she couldn't consent and then violently savaged her as she told them to stop. The complaint also includes several photos that do allege were taken at the studio on that night including one where she is sitting on Cum's law in February. A former producer and videographer filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, alleging Cum's harassed, drugged, and threatened him. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones worked on his most recent album Love and lived with him between September 2022 and November 2023. Jones alleges he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his behind by Mr. Combs. On one occasion, the lawsuit claims Jones woke up naked and disoriented in bed with Combs and two of his workers. He alleges the music mogul drugged Am. The lawsuit further asserts that Jones, in his capacity as Combs videographer, obtained hundreds of hours of video and audio recordings showing Combs, his employees, and his guests indulging in grave illegal activity. The illegal activity, according to the lawsuit, includes obtaining drugs, enticing workers to serve young people lace drinks, and saying Jones's lawsuit named a number of additional defendants, such as Cum's son Justin Cum's chief of staff Christina Corum, Sir Lewin Grange, CEO of Universal Music Group, and Ethiopia, the former CEO of Town Records. Shan Hawley, Hab to Mariam Cum's attorney, refuted Jones's claims. We have abundant, unquestionable evidence that his assertions are wholly untrue. Despite the fact that Diddy has refuted all of the accusations made against him. Enough is enough. In a statement, Diddy stated, I've sat silently for the last couple of weeks while people have tried to destroy my reputation, my legacy, and my character. People seeking fast money have made sickening accusations against me. To be clear, I did not do any of the horrible things that are being accused of. I will fight for the truth my family and my reputation. However, his denial has not stopped the negative effects that have resulted from these accusations since late November. Diddy briefly left his position as chairman of the Media Business Rebellion, which he established in 2013, while this move helps to ensure that Revolt stays steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, 
The company said in a statement, Capital Readiness, fans are happy that law enforcement is finally bringing comms to justice additionally, Variety reported that a new reality show featuring comms, which was in the early stages of development at Hulu, has been scrapped following the allegations. The show, tentatively titled Diddy Plus 7, would have followed comms and his family. Harlem, a charter school he opened in 2016, also announced it would end its partnership with the music mogul. That's all for this video, folks. Bye. Karma never misses. It may have taken almost 30 years, but the chickens have finally gone home to roost, as one admirer said.